Welcome to our podcast series of Coffee with Accord, where we discuss various peace and security related topics, including ongoing and emerging conflicts in Africa, policy developments, evolving theories, and innovative approaches to peace and security. Our guests are conflict resolution practitioners, experienced mediators, and policymakers within the peace and security landscape. Enjoy this episode and feel free to leave your comments. Coffee with Accord is published by the African Center for the Constructive Resolution of Disputes. The views and opinions expressed in this production do not reflect the views of Accord and its affiliates. Hello and welcome to Coffee with Accord. My name is Kyle Naidu and in this week's episode we will be speaking with Sidia Chisungu, a young Mozambican activist and entrepreneur and we'll be speaking about the work that she and her organization have been doing in Cabo Delgado, specifically in light of the current ongoing violent insurgency. But before we get started, uh, sit back and relax, grab yourself a cup of coffee, and enjoy this short animated clip uh, that will help to contextualize today's conversation. Cydia, it's so nice to speak with you again. I think it was, it's was it been years since we've had a conversation. Uh, so tell everyone that's listening in the podcast, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from and what you've been doing recently and a little bit about your organization. Okay. Uh, thank you so much and um, thanks for the opportunity also to be sharing a little bit about um, what we, I always say we because I never do anything alone. Um, have been doing here in Mozambique, specifically in the issue that is happening in the north of the country. So my name is Sidia Sisu, as Kyle already said, I'm from Mozambique. Um, I'm an activist, I would say since 2015 formally, and I've been working in education, human rights, I mean in general, but education is like the thing that I love the most, but now I see myself all over the world, specifically uh, now dealing with peace and um, uh, security in the north of, uh, of the country. I do other things. Professionally, I work as the social impact director at Beagle, which is a company that makes uh, products for menstrual hygiene management, but I work with education. And I'm also an entrepreneur because um, I like business in general and I also support other young people to create their own business. And for that, I have created um, a program in 2015 that is like training people since that time until uh, today. I'm studying education, my degree was in education, now I'm trying to finalize my master also in education. So yes, that's a little bit about me. Wow, so yeah, yeah a, busy, a busy woman, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I try my best to do a little bit of everything, but yeah. Great. That's well it. then, so tell us, what prompted you to get started, uh, to get involved in the current conflict that's happening in Cabo Delgado? How did you, you know, how did your organization and how did you yourself get, get involved? Yes, well, this is a long story, but I will try to make it short. Okay. Uh, as I said, I started my activism in 2015. And I've been, uh, how can I say this? I am happy for the fact that most of the causes that I choose to be involved in, it's not because they affect me like directly, mm -hmm. but because I see a problem in the society and I believe that I can do something to support. And I've been doing that since 2013 to 15. And with all these years, I found out that if we don't, we don't do anything for the, the problems or the challenges that we see, most probably no, nobody will do it. 
So uh, during the the year of 2017, when the attacks started in Camp Delgado, almost nobody cared about what was happening, including me, because I thought that it was an extension of the conflicts that we have in the center of the country. So conflicts in Mozambique, it's not something new. So if someone is attacked today, I mean, you feel sorry because you know it's bad, all of these things, but you don't really get surprised. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that the type of the, uh, the, the killings that were happening, it wasn't normal. And it started um, calling my attention for that. That's why by the end of 2018, uh, I started to pay more attention to the pictures that I was receiving on WhatsApp. And I was shocked because there were people without beheaded, without their members. And for me, with so many years following conflicts in the center, I've never seen something like that and was shocked. And still, this information, I wouldn't see them on TV. I wouldn't see them on social media where I was, uh, and I'm still very, very active. And I realized that there is something wrong. So why is it that uh, we're still having people being killed, their houses burned, and nobody's doing anything, including the society? So by the end of 2018, I decided to do something. And I talked to a few friends, and they recognized that we need to uh, start calling attention for that and that's how I decided to look for support, international support and um, send uh, letters to everyone and also post, make a post and I did uh, on Facebook with the hashtag Cap Delgado is also mm -hmm. Mozambique. I didn't expect that it would become a campaign but I did. Yeah, so, so tell us a little bit more about that. I mean you were saying that you know the, the, the part of the impetus for you to to start getting involved was the fact that you just weren't seeing some of this on sort of your, your traditional news sources. They were coming from sort of local WhatsApp groups and things. So, so what were some of the expectations, you know, given the fact that this wasn't a, a big, a big issue in, in, the, in the sort of national discourse? Mm -hmm. um, what were your expectations yeah. of this hashtag um, campaign that you had started? <laughs> okay, so Cap Delgado is also Mozambique. It's a little bit shocking, I would say, for most of the people. Because the first thing that they ask is, uh, we know that Cap Delgado is also Mozambique, and why are you telling us mm -hmm. this? And I would answer things like, if Cap Delgado is also Mozambique, why don't we pay attention to what's happening in the north of the country and we pretend everything in the country is good, everything is perfect, yep. has most of the speeches that we would um, follow on TV, on radio, uh, when people would be comparing the situation of the country, they would say, oh, Everything is nice. Mozambique is in a good way. The projects uh, with the natural, the gas is are going yeah. well, and nobody would talk about the insurgents there, and not even use the term terrorism. We were not even allowed, I would say, to use that term. Only by the end of, uh, I would say, and no, only in the beginning of last year, is where most most of the people and also the government started to feel more comfortable using this terminology. So the initial idea was to really make people feel shocked and ask their attention and make sure that Mozambique, it's not only Maputo, which is the capital city, where um, many people, specifically people who are prominent and are active on social media, are leaving. Mozambique is more than that. And one of my biggest concerns is that we have, of course, these uh, projects of net gas coming and uh, giving us um, hope for the future. But at the same hand, where these projects were be implemented, the situation wasn't good. Mm -hmm. So we would be taking advantage of the fact that things are coming, but uh, our people will be sacrificed in the name of these uh, natural resources that at that time we didn't know exactly what was happening. We thought it was only our natural resources. That's why uh, we needed to do everything to call the attention, not only uh, of the government, but also of the society, because both were totally wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Essential point. Um, so some of the work that you've been doing has, has you and your organization has really demonstrated the role that uh, members of civil society can play in times of conflict. So, yeah. so what do you think yeah. um, civil society can and should do in the current uh, in the current conflict, but also uh, in the space of conflict resolution, not just in Mozambique, but perhaps in in other places as well? 
Okay, I truly believe that the example that we gave specifically has young people, civil society, but specifically young people, um, is one of the biggest examples of how people can come together and promote change. Because the campaign that um, it became, like Cap Delgado is also Mozambique, it was, at a certain point, was first to call the attention of the problem that was happening there and demand not only the government but the society to do something. In the second hand was to call uh, the attention of the situation of the IDPs there and start asking for um, humanitarian support, not only from the government, um, but also from other international and local organizations who could do something. So the campaign uh, itself helped everyone understand what are the ways that we can follow. First of them, it is to acknowledge that there is a problem there. Second is to identify where are the main uh, and key points of uh, support that we can provide as society. Because of course we don't, we cannot uh, take guns and go there like in the war. We can't do that. But we can do more, which is to guide and call the attention uh, and also report about the abuses that at that time was happening with uh, IDP specifically women that were reporting cases of violation um, and things like that. So there, are, there is this type of things that we can do and also call the attention of the international community because most of the times we have our government sometimes well, not accepting some things and it's sometimes very easy when we call the attention of the international community so that they can make pressure in our, in our government. At that point, nobody was touching guns, nobody was doing anything, using social media and also uh, using creative forms to start promoting peace and calling the attention of, of the people for what is important to be done. And mostly, I truly believe that civil society can play a great role to uh, help identify what are the priorities when there is a conflict, when there is any situation that are putting people's life in risk, things like that. So one of the examples that I can give us, um, one of the attacks that we had, we had many people calling the attention of the president because, oh, the president needs to say something. And everyone uh, forgot about the humanitarian support that we needed to give to people that were arriving from one point to other point. So as a society, we needed to mobilize very quickly to start calling the attention of people. Okay, the president really needs to talk, but this is not the most priority thing. Our priority is our people. We need to take care of them. Uh, and by doing that, we will also help the other segments of the society to see what is the priority. Is our people, is our people, is our people. So yes, currently, if you ask me what is the, the roles, the roles are different since some of the objectives have sure. been achieved. As I said in the beginning, nobody was talking about this, but now people talk. So the the the, the challenges now are totally different. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, civil society, as you said, plays a great role in, in raising awareness, not just within the country, but, but internationally as well. Um, so, so looking at the conflict happening in in Cabo Delgado, in, in northern Mozambique, uh, and seeing what civil society has done. Has civil society, are they learning, are they communicating with other civil society groups across the continent that have experienced similar things? Are there, are there interactions between, between um, civil society and other countries that are facing similar issues? Okay, that's a great question. Uh, when the attack started, first of all, we didn't know what was happening. Uh, we just knew that our people were suffering, etc. Since we had uh, international uh, press saying that this is about terrorism, but inside the, co the, the country we couldn't talk about terrorism. Mm -hmm. So we were like, uh, what's really happening? If you cannot give a name to something, it's very difficult for you even to look and seek for support. But we tried our best with all the resources that we had, including researches that many people were starting to do in Mozambique, including people from outside uh, the country, we definitely realized that the situation that was happening in Mozambique was very similar to what was happening, for example, in Nigeria, in, um, in 
one part of Kenya, Mali, um, and other uh, countries of, um, of the continent. And we started to get engaged with young people in these countries so that we could learn with them. And we even organized like webinars, workshops with people also outside of the continent who study peace um, and security issues to guide us on how we can do things. And one of the biggest learns that we had from one of our comrades from Nigeria, he was just uh, sharing with us their experience as young people. He said, we need to be mindful that this is not something that starts mm -hmm. today and stops tomorrow. So you really need to be sustainable in terms of um, how you do your activities, making sure that you don't invest 100% of your energy today and you don't have any tomorrow. But we do things like uh, slowly. And that was in the beginning. Now, of course, we have more very organized way when I see I say us, I, I call it civil society in general. There are several workshops, webinars with organizations from the region, but also in the continent level to share what's happening in Mozambique, to ask for, for, for support, but also to um, let them know exactly how they can uh, be helpful and how we can um, get uh, any support in case we need. Specifically here in the region, there are so many conversations going on because, I mean, this issue when it started was ignored by everyone, including the region. So now it's something crucial for most of the countries because we want to make sure that this is not going to, uh, I don't know how to say this in English, but... Uh, uh, in Portuguese would be alastrar, which mm, is to spread. like move to yeah. other countries. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's absolutely. Spread. No, I think that ah. exchange of knowledge and sharing of information is, is, is can be absolutely crucial in times like these. Um, so, so in terms of civil society's yeah. engagement, not just with other civil society, but engagement with um, with government and, and others, maybe government uh, entities. How has that relationship um, been over the past, let's say? In the immediate, uh, you know, past few months, but then also historically since the start of this uh, of this conflict, how has how has that relationship changed, and, and, and are there places where that can be um, made stronger? Okay, so the relation was very hard in the beginning because we using uh, the hashtag Cap Delgado so Mozambique literally closed all the doors for us. We couldn't go even mm -hmm. on TVs. We couldn't go anywhere to talk about these things because they were the understanding that if you are saying that Cap Delgado is also Mozambique, you are talking against the government. You are accusing them for not be doing anything. And people at that time was like, oh, this issue uh, can only be solved by the government. They are the only people who can be talking about this. So the strategy that the government of Mozambique were using in the beginning was based on the silence. Um, making sure, I, I mean, I believe that they were trying to fix things um, alone and not try to show the weakness that our forces had at that time. But of course, the plan failed mm -hmm. and the result is what we are living today. But it's never too late to change and it's exactly what's happening. The government changed the approach. Today, it's not the same as um, it was happening in the past. And I would draw many, um, many other points here. One of them is that the fact that uh, one of the people that are being killed are not only Mozambicans, for example, uh, giving you the example of the last attack, we had people from other countries. So this definitely calls the attention of everyone and you cannot pretend things are not happening. If Mozambicans are dying, you can pretend there is nothing happening. But if people from other foreigners in general are being killed in your country, of course, the way you will act is not the same. And also, since we had projects there, was the interest of the government to make sure that all of uh, the attentions were like put away mm -hmm. so that the economy will be, I don't know how to say this in English, but <laughs> when sure. you protect uh, your, your interest, yes, um, in all this, uh, these projects. Today, I would say that the relation the relations are, are, are different. The government is, I would say, more open to listen, which doesn't mean that it's to listen and do something that you are saying, but at least to listen, because uh, there is so much pressure from everywhere. 
So yes, literally um, the approach is a little bit different. In the beginning, whoever wanted to report, including journalists, they would be arrested and there is one that disappeared. Um, I think there is a year already and nobody uh, knows where um, he is and other researchers at that time that were target because they were uh, reporting about this. Now, we don't really listen the same challenge that uh, we listened um, in, in the past. Today we have other issues, which is um, how our government is putting people's life first than uh, the interests Absolutely. with the projects. Um, yeah, no, essential points there. So, so then moving on, I mean, well, firstly, actually, I want to I want to ask you a question you, about your your T-shirt. You're wearing a shirt that says Palma. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Yeah, sure. And, uh, <laughs> sure. This was random, actually. <laughs> I just like the T-shirt. <laughs> it wasn't something that I planned, but this was part of the campaign that uh, we did a couple months ago when uh, we had one of our worst attacks in. I think when was that? It was by the end of March? I think it was twenty something, if I'm not mistaken. And um, we started receiving messages on WhatsApp, Facebook, people saying that I had Palma is under attack. But you know, as I said, we are used to this to these things. So you will you will never have the big picture that oh no, these people re really mm -hmm. took over a whole village. But with the days, we started to have the better picture that it, literally we had our forces um, doing everything to take back the village and uh, we had the communications um, from in the national channel and all of that uh, recognizing that um, uh, I mean the, the village was yeah. under control of the terrorists and people were being moved specifically to, to Pimba, some of them being rescued and uh, we started receiving information that many people um, uh, in the hotel at Hotel Amarula at that time, some of them were getting, um, getting support, some of them when they were trying to run, they were attacked and killed. And the big, one of the, the saddest news that we received on that time was to know that Mozambicans were, some of them were being denied access to get in Tanzania. And all of that made us think like from mm -hmm. night to morning that again, we need to mobilize. We need to make sure that people know what are the priorities. We need to start mobilizing again to get resources, humanitarian support, call the attention. And yes, we uh, started the campaign and we collected money, we collected donations, and we started to assist people from April, May. Wow. And yeah, no, that's now, absolutely crucial yeah. for civil society to be able to mobilize quickly in times of, of immediate uh, crisis. No, absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, let's, let's look forward a little bit here. And so, you know, when this crisis and this, this insurgency and, and this violent conflict comes to an end, um, what are some of the roles that civil society that are maybe preparing for and planning for in terms of, you know, maintaining a peace um, that may come about and, and building social cohesion? Um, you know, what are some of the plans for society, even if they are even thinking about that? Okay, this is a tough question. I have to recognize because um, at this point, there are so many things that we are thinking uh, that are necessary to be done. First of all, is how definitely people will still be protected and we will avo avoid um, mm -hmm. upcoming conflicts. Mm -hmm. Can you say like that? Conflicts that can happen. <laughs> that can happen because we know they will happen. But we want to make sure that our government is structured and prepared enough to, um, to give the response. And for that, um, now there are so many communications in the region. Um, there are uh, support that were promised already with some of yeah. the, uh, the countries uh, around Mozambique to be supporting in all the ways possible. And um, this is one of the things. The other thing is that we want to make sure that people have um, have food, they have home, they, they have uh, a place to sleep, things like that, basic conditions. The other thing that at the same time we are thinking it's about prevention because we don't want to we don't want this to be illustrated yeah. to other provinces. Oh, even though this already started, we have cases of recruitment 
in Ampula, in Niasa, etc. But we want to make sure that it won't get worse than, than what it is. And um, there are organizations that now are starting to have these peace building communications to start um, getting together and organizing in terms of civil society, who is doing what, who is doing what, and how are we structured and organized enough to facilitate the, how, how do the dialogue, the, dialogue in English, right? the chat and mm -hmm. communication between people. So that, exactly, dialogue uh, between um, the people. So, because people on the ground, they also are struggling to understand what's happening because they see many things going on in, in the province but at the same time, they uh, see themselves like trying to leave their houses from night to morning and all of these things. So all of this is being prepared. If you ask me exactly how do we think this can be solved in future, well, we should uh, go back and see what are the main causes of what's happening. Of course, it's multidimensional. I can't say though that, mm -hmm. oh no, it's because of the national natural resources, it's because of this and that, but we know that one of the big um, challenges that contributed for this is the fact that uh, we have, um, I don't know how do I say this, but you, when you have differences in terms of opportunities, social, yeah. economic, um, in, in Mozambique in general. So we want to make sure now that development is integrated and we don't have people who feel excluded, who don't have like access to work. Of course, this happens in all the provinces, but there are provinces we, where this is worse, specifically in the north of the country. Now we have these organizations that were created with the government that is called, how do we call it? Uh, that it's kind of responsible now to make sure that um, we develop the north of the country. But as I always say, it cannot mm -hmm. only be the north of the country. We need to see all the, uh, the regions of the country because what's going to happen, we will fix one problem and create others. So in future, for us to be able to make sure that um, we avoid or we prevent, we need to see what are the main causes and after that, we can start uh, uh, the process of healing, mm -hmm. the process of promoting more actions for peace and things like that. So yes, actions are being uh, made. Essential by point. No, thank you so much, step. Celia. That was yeah. extremely in insightful. And unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, yes, I know there's a lot more to talk about. We could be talking about this for oh, ages. But uh, I just want to thank you, Celia, for making yourself available to speak with us and giving us your insights. Yeah. They were extremely helpful in understanding you know the, this diverse and complex issue that's happening right now in in, in Cabo Delgado um, so thank you so much for spending your day with us your evening with us and uh, and I'd like to thank all our viewers as well and our listeners uh, for watching this episode of uh, Coffee with Accord and until next time my name is Kyle Naidu and we'll be seeing you soon Thank you for watching today's episode of Coffee with a Pod. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive notifications every time we post a new episode. For more updates, like our Facebook page, African Center for the Constructive Resolution of Disputes, or follow us on Twitter or on Instagram at Accord Online. To learn more about Accord, visit our website www.accord.org.za.